Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Today I want to show you a trick for how you can get some more kick and snare out of a stereo drum track. Now it may be that you've got this drum track already mixed and you need to get a bit more kick and snare out of it, or it may be that it's an electronic drum kit and you want to get a bit more kick and snare in your mix. This is going to work either way, and this is how you can do it in Logic Pro X. Let's take a look. So what I've got here is a mix and it was done on an electronic kit and it sounds great, but I just want to get a bit more out of that kick and snare. Let's take a listen to it as it stands. Okay, so it sounds cool. The drums themselves sound fantastic. It was done on a Roland TD30, I believe. I just want to get a bit more out of that snare drum because I think it's going to get a bit lost. It's lacking a little bit of weight. The kick drum is kind of okay as it is, but this technique can work for kick drum. It can work for toms, whatever it is. So I'm going to duplicate this track. I'm going to press Command D and then drag the information down onto that track by holding Alt and that will copy it down. So we've now got two versions of this and I'm going to make this into a specific snare version. So I'm just going to call this snare. And what I want to do is just derive, in a frequency sense, the snare from this track. So the snare typically lives in kind of the low mids. Um, we're not going to have too much of the low end, not too much of the high end, because in this particular track, the kick is going to be right down at the bottom and the cymbals, the hi-hat, etc., are going to be in the very top end. So let's EQ this track. Let's take a listen. I'm just going to solo in on that snare drum. Now this is going to sound pretty horrible, but that's kind of the idea. We just want to bring up that resonant frequency of the snare. Let's zone in on it. We can see the snare is just around here. That's the resonant frequency. So let's get rid of everything except for that. Cool. I'm going to turn all these other bands off just so they don't get in the way because they often do. Um, let's just go to our green one here. That's it. And we're going to just turn this up and try and find that specific frequency of the snare drum. Cool. Now that sounds distorted as hell. That's absolutely fine. That's what we want at the moment. We want it to be the loudest thing there. So just that snare drum. Let's tighten the cue so that we're not affecting any of the frequencies around it as well. We just want that resonant frequency of the snare. That's great. Okay, so we can just hear the snare drum there, or more accurately, we can hear the snare louder than anything else, and that's what we want. So let's press Control and B. This is going to bounce that in place. It's going to bounce it, but just bring it up on a new track. We want to leave the source as it is, that's fine. We're going to put in a new track, and we're going to call it Snare Trigger, for example. And we can leave everything else as it is. Audio tail is not important here, but we want to um, not bypass the effects. We want the effects to be in there. That's the EQ that we've just applied. Let's go on OK. And we've got our Snare Trigger track. So let's zoom in just a touch, and we can take a listen to this track. And we should hear exactly the same as we did when we were EQing. That sounds pretty disgusting. But you can see from the waveforms that the snare is far louder than anything else. So with this, we can use Logic's built-in drum triggering function to trigger some samples. So we do that by pressing Control and D, and it's going to analyze our track, and it's going to create some settings for us. So in this instance, we're going for a snare, we're going to be replacing the threshold. I normally like to leave it around minus 12. I think that's the default. Um, it tends to pick up stuff pretty well. We can see if we scroll down just slightly, this is our uh, MIDI track that is created, just this one here, Snare Trigger Plus. And we can see that it lines up, if I just bring this out of the way, we can see that it kind of lines up with all the hits that we want. So this, for example, is a snare hit, and we've got a MIDI note there. This is a snare hit, we've got a MIDI note there. In exactly the same way as it would if we just had a normal microphone on that snare drum. So we're going to say OK for that, and we've got ourselves a nice snare drum track. 
Let's take a listen to that just on its own. That sounds cool. So we've got the Acoustic Snare D1 here. This is kind of just the standard one that it gives you. You can scroll through these and you can bring up some different sounds. Some sound better than others. What I'm going to use here though is my own um, drum sample pack. This is a snare sample pack. Um, this is the medium brass snare. This is from the uh, Rock Snare Pack 1, which you can get using the, the link down below if you like the sound of this. I'm gonna use the process sound because I'm not going to be processing this afterwards. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna click open. Okay, so what we're gonna get from this snare uh, sample is multiple velocities. So the good thing about this way of triggering is if we double click on the MIDI region, it's not done everything at a static velocity, it's actually done them at varying velocities, which is great because when you have a multi-velocity sample pack such as this, it means you can take advantage of that. It's not just going to be triggering a one shot, it's not just gonna be triggering one sound, you can actually get the dynamics out of the playing. So what I'd like to do then is just take a listen to this as it was, and then as it is now with this new snare that we've derived from the stereo file. I'll start off with it muted, and then we'll bring it in. Remember, on this snare trigger track, this is the one that we bounced in place. You don't want to be hearing this. It automatically mutes it for you, but just make sure that's not in there. Just for safekeeping, I'm going to get rid of it completely. So I'm going to turn this snare trigger track down, and then I'm going to bring it up gradually, and we're going to hear that snare come to life. We're going to get loads more bottom end out of it, loads more thud that we were missing before. Let's take a listen. So we can add so much more bottom end, we can add some more top end if that's what we're aiming for. Whatever the sample is that we're using, we can add that to the sound. We're not just limited by the fact that it's a stereo drum file. This is going to be particularly helpful if you're recording electronic drums because you only have the stereo file there. Or maybe you've been sent some drums to mix and they've just sent you a stereo file of drums. It's annoying, but there are ways around it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you get some use out of this. Make sure you check out the link in the description for these drum samples and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. Take care.